Hi guys, today I'm going to actually um, just dread this back bit up, well section it anyway, to four parts. So I've just taken the two sides, the top and the back. So today we're just going to attempt the back part. So I've um, got a fimble on. I like to use a lot of clips. So we're going to just pin this bit on the top here. Just be aware that, you know, you will be working with a client at some stage, so it's a good idea to not really do it super tight, but just enough for you to see what you're doing down here. So we start at the very base down here. I'm just gonna make a nicer line. If you can um, just see that there. With the dolls, you know, it's never going to be the same as, as uh, human hair because it's a lot more sparse. So just keep that in mind. So we've got our layer here. I'm just going to swoop from the left hand side here, make my first triangle. So we start with our triangle on that side. Can't really see very well from that side and I don't want to block off the camera. So I'm just hoping that some, you probably need to be a bit more precise on a, on a full dread job. So that's our first triangle. And then we swoop down from here and we grab our next triangle. In this situation, it's good to clip up this other part. As much as it seems like a lot of work to do, just do it because it just makes your life so much easier. I'm making um, a pencil size um, dread. You'll notice at the back of, um, of the um, person's head, they're gonna have the least amount of hair at the nape of their head. And also at the sides, um, we often see less hair yeah. too. One up or down, one up. And now we're going down, so this one, goes across again using our clips bon is always telling people to use their clips because um it just makes it actually easier to dread and also more comfortable for the client because if you start to try and do it without clips particularly if you're inexperienced you can pull in um hair from another dread and that can be very uncomfortable for the client you can see i'm not going incredibly close to the base we don't like hair to go really super close to the base. It's just um, going to um, break hair. You should attempt doing sectioning after your you have been practicing on your dread hair for some time. I'm assuming at this stage when you try this, you've already made your size ring. So you know essentially how much hair is involved in a pencil size dread, how much hair is involved in a larger dread and um, once they settle down they'll just sit in between each other and they won't be any sticking up you can see there that's nice nicely done and i'm just going to now go to the next row just again roughly um roughly do your um you know your amount of hair that you're going to take and just make your triangle shape this is just behind the ear now we don't get to the size of the hair until until after we've finished up to the crown. That's how I like to do my sectioning because I like to see how it's sitting at the back. And also sometimes I just dread one dread up um, while I'm in this process just to see how easily the hair is going to dread because it um, just gives you a, a bit of an indicator then on how long it's going to take you to finish the job. Some um, Some dread jobs you can finish in three hours others it's seven hours it's really dependent on the um the hair type all right come back over here now you are not going to be able to do this as quickly as me so don't get all panicky or deterred that you're never going to do this it does take some time it's not um it's not something that you're gonna be able to just whip out. Well, some people can actually. I have seen locticians learn this method very quickly and and you can get quite um, interesting patterns. So a lot of people consider it to be similar to the flower of life, which I can see how there's that alignment. Um, and, um, and you can get very, very precise at it. I'm very good at judging size. The reason we choose a triangle over a square or a rectangle, I think is how it used to be, is pretty obvious really when you apply science to it. And that is that a 
triangle has three points and is obviously going to make a circle much easier over a square or a rectangle. Particularly, I find with the rectangle dreads that have been made, they go very flat. Because it's when we say flower of life or, or sacred geometry, we have um, those shapes in our DNA. So it, we find that the people that have had our kind of sectioning applied to their dread install don't suffer the same kind of um, problems with their scalp as we see with other people who have had the square or rectangle sectioning. Often they get lots of dandruff and um, dry scalps or, or psoriasis, all kinds of things that I believe occur from poor sectioning. Um, and the other thing that you will see over your time and will be a large percentage of your work is resectioning and um, trying to give the client some relief or even the actual size dread they were after because a lot of people get dreads and they thought that they were going to be pencil sized because in the beginning we know that dreads expand and, and in actual fact they end up with like four cucumbers on the top of their head, which is not the most attractive look. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there for today. That is, um, we've now done, I think you can see there, we have done the whole back. Sorry, just trying to get a better angle for you. And you can see it's, um, it's going to sit really nicely, you know, starting at the bottom, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, the same at the top. So here we do an up and a down and an up. So here the triangle is with the point pointing down and here is a triangle with the point pointing up. So they all fit into each other. And when they're going to lay down, they're gonna sit really nicely. So you're not gonna see as much scalp as you would do if it was a um, square or rectangle. Okay, thank you.